Uh, Fraser, let's go straight to the front page of The Telegraph. Asuela Braverman is speaking out yet again, and she says Islamists are now in charge of Britain. Yeah, this is the quite bold uh, statement from uh, Suella Braverman. I mean, they're not in charge of Britain. I think that's probably a bit much. But certainly uh, we're seeing Islamists have far too much influence on our key institutions. The most obvious example being Parliament, essentially the Speaker Lindsay Hoyle folding under Islamist mm -hmm. pressure, uh, under threats, uh, real or perceived, uh, changing parliamentary procedure, uh, you know, on behalf of uh, essentially giving way to giving way to Islamist pressure, and she mentions other institutions as well. I mean, we've seen how schools have been warped uh, by Islamist pressure. There is a teacher uh, in Batley who has been in hiding for several years now uh, because he dared to show a cartoon of Muhammad in a religious studies class. This is a free country. You should be allowed. To, uh, you should absolutely be allowed to show a cartoon with of Muhammad, uh, without being hounded uh, out of your job, without losing your uh, liberty. Uh, so, I, I think the problem here is is not necessarily that Islamists are all powerful. They're not. They're a tiny, tiny proportion of uh, people. Uh, tiny, tiny. You know, a serious threat. Absolutely. But you know, they are they are only as powerful as we are weak. And as that's as... the resonance around the country, which is mm. people are thinking the police aren't acting on this. She goes on to say, actually, the police are playing favourites with pro-Palestine protesters. The Islamists, the extremists and the anti-Semites are in charge now. People around this country are sick and tired of the fact they see the police doing absolutely nothing. Those images being projected onto Big Ben saying from the river to the sea, that cannot be allowed to happen. When the MPs were inside, voting on what to do next. Yeah, I mean, it, Suella Bradman is inflammatory with every comment, mm. really, that she makes. And I think we have to be relatively balanced about it in that sense, because what she does talk about is multiculturalism in this country and that we're... We, we, the reality is, is that the multiculture is not working brilliantly well. The boundaries aren't being break broken. We have lots of pockets of different cultures living together, but separately. And actually, there's a bigger thing here to look at, isn't there, that we should be working towards to try and create a better place for Well, she for said everybody. multiculturalism has failed, and that's what she's talking but, about. Yeah. She's talking about the silos that exist. Exactly. But then she's talking about it in a more negative way, when perhaps there could be a way to try and drive this forward more And positively. we talked to an imam earlier mm. on the program about the, the rise, huge rise in Islamophobia. And actually, he talked about the responsibility of us in the media, politicians, for example, to be careful about the kind of language we use. The term Islamists, for example, when we equate Islam with negativity and with extremism, then uh, we are creating... I have to take issue with that. I mean, Islamism is a politicised form of Islam. Absolutely, people should not be uh, conflating this with ordinary Muslims. Ordinary Muslims deplore this kind of extremism. They are as horrified uh, and, and as upset by terrorism as everyone else. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of surveys that suggest that, in some ways, um, the average Muslim is more trusting of the state, more worried about terrorism than, than um, the average Brit. So uh, we shouldn't, absolutely should not make that conflation. But, but it what is we the average, absolutely, but what the we average absolutely Muslim cannot who is do, finding themselves targeted. But what we absolutely mm. cannot do is... Um, draw back or hold back in any way on criticising and calling out the extremism mm -hmm. that is there. Because I think all too often what you see is when there is an Islamist attack or when it, there is a tendency to sort of shy away from discussing it. I mean, when David Amos was murdered, what did MPs spend days talking about? They started talking about social media. Mm. You know, the guy, he was stabbed by an Islamist terrorist and they were talking about clamping down on what we say to each other online. Let's be nicer to members of parliament. There is this constant... Uh, avoidance of this problem and you know it's not racist to call out uh islamism or islamist extremism on the contrary it's it's racist to to say that you know uh muslims can't uh, handle this discussion or that it's too inflammatory no we need to call it out